This video is sponsored by Clean My Mac X. Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here. And now with macOS Catalina officially out, Apple is now getting rid of 32-bit apps on the Mac, and they're also implementing a brand new way to bring iPad apps over to the Mac with Project Catalyst. So for this video, I wanted to go over some of my favorite apps, some old and some new for macOS Catalina, and including some of those Project Catalyst apps that are from the iPad that are now available on the Mac. First of all, let's start off with a free app, and best of all, it's already pre-installed if you have macOS Catalina. And that would be the brand new Podcasts app. You wouldn't know it by looking at it, but Apple Podcasts is an app made using Apple's brand new Project Catalyst, which aims to bring iPad apps over to the Mac. And this is probably one of the best examples of a Project Catalyst app that I've seen yet, because it looks so much like a native Mac app. In fact, it looks almost exactly like the music app, which is using Apple's native UI kit. And this app is pretty simple and does exactly what it says it does. It plays your favorite podcasts. However, I find it so much better to have the podcast app as its own app and something that's not buried under the cruft of iTunes. And because the podcast app is its own app, it also syncs much better with your previous play positions, whether you were previously listening on your iPhone, iPad, or even your Apple Watch. I also wanted to mention this podcast app because I've personally been using it so frequently lately because I recently launched my own podcast called GadgetCast with my good friend Travis MCP. So if you want to listen to my podcast, make sure you check out the link in the description and I'll include a link to GadgetCast. Okay, this next app for macOS Catalina is also made possible by Project Catalyst, and that is the brand new Twitter app. So this is probably one of the better examples of Project Catalyst, because Twitter used to have its own native Mac app, and unfortunately, Twitter did not want to put the resources into maintaining a separate code base for the Mac, and they recommended that users just simply use the website. Well, if you're like me, you probably don't like using the Twitter website, and you would much rather use an app. Well, now, thankfully, in macOS Catalina, the Twitter app is back. This app does exactly what you think it does. It gives you a Twitter client directly on your Mac so you can browse through your tweets, notifications, direct messages, and so on. Despite using the iPad codebase, Twitter on Catalina also supports separate windows for when you click on media or when you want to compose a tweet. However, it's not perfect. Twitter can definitely feel like an iPad app at times. For example, if you drag on the left side, you'll actually go back like you could on an iPad. Scrolling up to refresh looks just like iOS. But even though it's not perfect, this is a perfect example of an app that just wouldn't exist right now if Apple didn't implement this Project Catalyst system. So while it could still use some improvements, I would still rather have this version of the app than have no app at all. Another app that makes its way over to the Mac thanks to Project Catalyst is the Carrot Weather app. If you've never used Carrot Weather on the iPhone or iPad before, I can guarantee you've never used a weather app quite like this. That's because Carrot Weather has personality, and by personality, I mean the personality of an omnipotent AI robot that calls you names, treats you badly, and gives you snarky weather updates. Building Microverse. It's gloomier than the day George Lucas invented midichlorians. The sky is overcast because you don't deserve nice things. Well, that's if you want it to. If you don't want to be called names, you can update the personality to be friendly or neutral. Or if you want to take it up from the next level of snarky, you can have it be homicidal or overkill depending on how you want your weather app to roast you on a daily basis. Not only is the robot personality a ton of fun, but the weather app itself is greatly detailed and provides you with weather updates that are super accurate and can even alert you on a timely basis on whether whether or not you're going to need to grab your umbrella before you head out of the house. And it offers a great view of the weather forecast and weather conditions. And you can set the daily temperature and conditions in the Mac menu bar. You can even browse the inbuilt map for weather patterns so you can be your own weather anchor. Furthermore, Carrot Weather also has a time travel feature to see what the weather was on past dates. To the past. Now that I have my very own time machine, there are so many tyrants, despots, and dictators I'd like to go back and meet. The only major downside to this app is that it's a little expensive, starting at $14.99, and on top of that, there's even a tiered subscription, which gives you even more data and server-side rain notifications, but I personally just pay for the base app, and I don't think I'm missing out on any major features. 
Okay, so so far we focused a lot on brand new Catalina apps. And if you wanna upgrade your Mac to Catalina to start using these apps, you need to check out our sponsor for this video, Clean My Mac X. And that's because Mac OS Catalina takes about 30 gigabytes of space just to download. And if your computer is almost at its storage limit, you're going to need to free up some space. Thankfully, Clean My Mac X makes this process super simple and takes all the hassle out of doing it yourself by offering a simple one button press to scan your entire system. And after your scan is completed, you can see how many gigabytes of worthless data was just taking up space on your system. As you can see, it deletes system junk, unseen apps, hidden clutter, and it will remove any 32-bit apps you have that won't work on macOS Catalina. Best of all, if your old 32-bit app has a new 64-bit app available, the Clean My Max updater feature will instantly get 64-bit app replacements for your software. So not only will this make your Mac clutter-free before you upgrade to Catalina, but it will also remove malware and adware agents, speed up your Mac, and build an interactive map of your Mac storage. This app is also native and notarized by Apple, so you can trust it too. You can click the link in the description below to learn more and download a free trial of Clean My Mac X. And a premium license costs only $35 so you can keep using it whenever you need to clean up junk from your Mac. So make sure to check out Clean My Mac X and thank you so much to Clean My Mac X for sponsoring this video. Okay, if you've ever watched any of my previous videos or even as you're watching right now, you might wonder how I keep such a clean, meticulous looking desktop. Am I just that neat? Well, no, actually the real story is my desktop is cluttered with all sorts of icons, but I do use an application called Hidden Me. Hidden Me is a Mac utility that lets you instantly hide all of your desktop icons with a single click. So if you have a messy desktop and you wanna present it on screen, just click and bam, all the icons are now hidden. I really like this for showing off my Mac displays on video and I just use it most of the time so I have a clean desktop free of distractions. Hidden Me is completely free, but if you want multi-display support, there's also Hidden Me Pro, which retails for just $1.99. Another frequent request I also get are good photo editing apps on the Mac. One of my top recommendations as a great photo editor and also a great Photoshop replacement is Affinity Photo. Affinity Photo is great for anyone looking for a Photoshop replacement because it has a lot of the same features that Photoshop has. So of course you can expect to find basic tools like adding text to a photo or using the healing brush to remove things like dust or other objects. You can use the selection brush to refine your selection or use it to cut out parts of the picture and paste them into another, and so many of the other same tools you'd expect to find on Photoshop. Not only that, but Affinity Photo also has separate personas, like the Liquid Persona, Export Persona, Tone Mapping Persona, or the one I use more often, the Developing Persona, where you can change things like the exposure, black point, brightness, contrast, clarity, saturation, vibrance, white balance, shadows, or highlights, or select a custom profile for photos. And of course, you can do other advanced things like apply lens correction, noise reduction, split toning, and more. Furthermore, Affinity Photo is great for macOS Catalyst because it takes advantage of Apple's brand new sidecar feature. This lets you bring over Affinity Photo over to your iPad so you can edit your photos with your Apple Pencil. Honestly, there's so many features in Affinity Photo, you could write a book on them, which Affinity Photo has actually done. And the best part about Affinity Photo is that it's only $49.99 on the Mac App Store. And that's an insanely good value when you consider that Photoshop is $10 a month for however long you want to use the app. And then say if you use it for a year and you end up canceling your subscription, you don't even get to keep the app. Okay, the last app I wanted to talk about is one that I use all the time and it's how I edit all of my videos for the channel. I am of course talking about Apple's beloved video editor, Final Cut Pro 10. Now, Final Cut Pro 10 has been around for a while and over its lifetime, it has received constant free updates that have delivered more value on top of an already great video editor. And that's no different with macOS Catalina because Final Cut Pro 10 gets an update that delivers a new metal-based engine that improves playback and accelerates graphics tasks, including rendering, real-time effects, and exporting 
on metal compatible Mac computers. Apple gives an example that the 15 inch MacBook Pro will benefit from performance that's up to 20% faster. Or if you're lucky enough to have an iMac Pro, you will see gains up to 35%. Furthermore, you get more flexible options with external GPUs. You can now select which GPU that Final Cut Pro 10 will use to accelerate graphics processing. Of course, you can also use the brand new sidecar feature on macOS Catalina as well, and that will allow you to use your iPad as a display or to just edit videos directly with your Apple Pencil on your iPad using Final Cut Pro 10. And even though these updates to Final Cut Pro 10 on macOS Catalina improve playback and rendering, Final Cut Pro 10 was already so good on previous Mac systems. I highly recommend this app for anyone looking to edit video on a Mac. And Final Cut Pro 10 is definitely the most expensive app I'm recommending at $299, but if you really want to edit videos in the fastest, smoothest, and most powerful way possible on a Mac, well, it's worth the cost of $299. However, I would like to note that if you are a student, you can take advantage of a really great student discount, which gives you Final Cut Pro 10 and all of Apple's other Pro apps, like Logic Pro 10, Compressor, and Motion, for the single bundled cost of just $199 for all of these apps. That's not just $199 for one of the apps, it's $199 for all of them. All right, everyone, and those are some of my favorite apps for macOS Catalina. Hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, make sure you give me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, make sure you're subscribed. Also be sure to check out our sponsor for this video, Clean My Mac X. Also be sure to let me know what some of your favorite macOS Catalina apps are in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care everyone.